Hi, so I just wanted to do a video about anxieties related to medication for dermatomyositis. Obviously, you may have anxieties for medication, whatever disease or condition that you have. But for me, it's dermatomyositis. So the reason I'm making the video is because recently my consultant has told me that I have to go back on a drug that I was on way back at the beginning when I first got diagnosed, uh, mycophenolate, also known as Celsept. So this is like a, another transplant drug. People get it to stop their body rejecting transplant organs that's been transplanted. So when you first, when I first got diagnosed with dermatomyositis, the first thing they do is give you steroids because it's an inflammation going on in the body. They try and get that down straight away. So steroids is the way to do that. And you have to stay on these steroids for quite a while. But to begin with, they put you on a very high dose. So to start with, I was on 40 milligrams every day. Uh, this was for quite a while. And then it went down to 20 milligrams for another while. Down to 15, down to 12.5, down to 10, 7.5. I'm currently at five milligrams. But to get there, I also had to use other medications. So because dermatomyositis is an, is an autoimmune condition, so basically the body is attacking itself, you have to take medications that stop that happening. So way back at the beginning, I was given the steroids, so prednisolone, but I was also given mycophenolate. So mycophenolate, here, these aren't my new ones yet, but here's some that I've got left over. So I had to take these in the morning and at night. And the annoying thing about mycophenolate is in the mor when you take it in the morning, you have to take it one hour before you eat. And then your second one, you have to take two hours after you eat. So it has to be on an empty stomach, which is a bit of a pain. Things like that just really, ugh, I can't be bothered with. But obviously it's to make you feel better. So this didn't really make me feel better, to be honest. And taking this strength of drug always just makes you feel really iffy and horrible. And at one point while taking these, I almost passed out on the motorway when I was driving. So luckily my daughter was in the car and she was learning to drive at the time. So we pulled off the motorway and she took over um, with her L plates on. Um, but that was a very scary time. I also remembered having nightmares every night to the point where I bought myself a little nightlight, a little kid's nightlight. Because when you wake up from a nightmare, it's just always that sinister feeling and it was horrible and it was just night after night. So I bought myself nice little coloured lights to try and cheer me up. I also got headaches. I get headaches anyway, but I think that made it worse. I felt nauseous. I just didn't feel right. Walking around, I just didn't feel right at all. But that was stopped because a complication of dermatomyositis is interstitial, interstitial lung disease, which I've got. And my lung disease progressed while taking mycophenolate. So at the same time, I started receiving rituximab infusions which is, you know, you go to hospital, it's a bit like chemo. Some people call it chemo, it's way up there with chemo, but you go and you're basically getting this stuff put in your inner drip in your body for about four to six hours. So you get that and then two weeks later, you go back and get it again. And then that's what happens every six months. So that made a huge difference. And I think I had that three lots. That made a big difference. And then... I had a new consultant who, instead of the mycophenolate, decided to put me on tacrolimus or Prograph, which is another organ, you know, like transplant drug. So I had been doing really well on the tacrolimus. We stopped the rituximab infusions about a year ago and I still continued to do well. Um, the... Tracolimus had its own side effects where it would make me shake constantly, like my hands would constantly be shaking. Uh, my little nephew even asked, Aunt Lizzie, why is your hand shaking all the time? But it was constantly, so you'd constantly feel, you know, you just feel different. You don't feel your normal self when you're on all these heavy meds. But that was working. It was keeping the lung disease under control. It was kind of keeping my condition under control. But... My body was not happy with it, so my kidney my kidney function went really dangerously low. 
my liver levels have always been off, but they've been affected. At my di diabetes, I got diabetes. Um, I got diabetes, steroid induced diabetes, but the tacrolimus just it went off the scale. Like I could barely see at some some points. Um, it was terrifying, uh, and my bloods were just constantly high. The minute I'm not joking, the minute I came off the tacrolimus, my blood sugars came right back down. So they were used to be sitting at consistently at 30 and they came right down. In fact, I had a hypo two days after stopping the tacrolimus and that was the first hypo I'd ever had. So I've had consistent hypos since then, but things are starting to level out again. Um, I've kind of been monitoring my bloods myself and taking my reduced my medication myself as I see fit. And at the moment, I am not taking any diabetes meds. That may change next week, but when I get my period, I've noticed that my bloods drop so I don't take any medication while well, well, I've got my period and for the past while they have been consistently level, they've been within range so I just keep a check, monitor my own bloods, test my blood four times a day so that's good but my consultant rang last week to say that he wants to try me on my caffeinolate again because he thinks that maybe my lung disease progressed through it last time because maybe it just wasn't ready to settle at the acute stages of the disease. So he wants to try me on mycophenolate again with the hope of getting me off the steroids and to stop the disease, you know, to keep the disease under control because we don't want it flaring up. Because I recently had a chest infection and that kind of threw me a bit. So he can't really lower the steroids as is. And when you lower steroids below five, it's, you know, it's not pleasant. Even if I forget to take one one day, it's not pleasant. Uh, it's like withdrawing from, I can only imagine withdrawing from heroin. Uh, the sweats, the shakes, it's horrible. So, I have to now take these mycophenolate again and I'm really not looking forward to it. I am currently trying to finish my PhD. I've got to have that submitted in December and I really don't want to be taking anything that's going to make me feel horrible again. You know, I don't want to be lying in bed feeling sick and feeling shaky or feeling like I'm going to pass out when I'm driving. I need to be feeling normal. It's nice to not have these drugs pumping through my system at the minute, apart from the steroids, but I know I've got to or the disease could flare up and I could be back at square one. So yeah i just wanted to express how anxious i'm feeling about starting these drugs again and the whole eating you know having to take them when you eat at different times that just sounds like hard work to me but yeah these are some of the medications that you can take for dermatomyositis and other conditions i'm sure um but not something i'm looking forward to